what are the two, three things you would like to see immediately at a national level, if they need to be at a national level, um, that would make you feel more comfortable about the trajectory going forward? Well, I'll tell you the one I've been screaming for for more than a month already in the United States. We have in the United States, through our Centers for Disease Control, a network of so-called sentinel surveillance hospitals. These hospitals are used to do routine surveillance, such as, is there a methicillin-resistant Staphylococcus aureus in hospital populations in America? So what I want is a targeted a hospital surveillance that goes to every single intensive care unit in every one of the Sentinel hospitals in America. How many are we and, talking about? Oh, I think we're talking about a, a roughly a thousand hospitals. So something we America. can do. Yeah. And so it's doable yeah. if we had a test, mm -hmm. and and to specifically test all um, pneumonia patients of unknown etiology. So that means you know they don't have bacterial infection that causing their pneumonia, and you're sure it's not flu. So, you could, so that leaves everything else, but definitely viral. And test and find out how many people do we already have, unbeknownst to us, untested, sitting in hospital wards carrying this virus and potentially exposing all the, ho the hospital workers and other patients. We should have done that a month ago. And I think we would have saved a lot of lives if we had done it a month ago. We would have known which hospitals in what parts of the country already had silent, un uh, undiagnosed COVID-19 cases. Um, but hospitals are the number one place where they're going to be found. And the second would have been a surveillance to just figure out a random sample of uh, senior citizen homes that are assisted living centers for people that actually uh, do require some medical attention already for whatever underlying problem they have. And again, the most vulnerable population the most in vulnerable, the country. Yes. The most vulnerable. And just go in there and test them by the thousands and find out how many are already infected. Um, another thing we don't seem to know is why so many people can have this disease and not display any symptoms, um, including most particularly children. Mm -hmm. Do we know anything about that? Yeah, we know more than we did a couple of weeks ago, but, um, and every day we're learning more. But of course, it's important for people to understand that we're in a live science experiment. But now we actually are getting more data to show that there have been children very seriously sick and a few have died in China. Uh, and it's not an utterly benign experience for children. More importantly, children may be vectors. In other words, they're, they're able to get infected and to pass it on to others, mm -hmm. but feel no particular ill effects, and therefore actually be, worst case scenario, running amok, you know, very vigorous as kids are. So that, you know, when you're the mayor of New York trying to make a decision, do I close the schools, and you think, well, a lot of those parents will probably leave the kids with Nana, right, while they go to work. Well, are those kids vectors passing their virus to their older grandparents?